It's a privilege to co-host this event, not only because after the need to promote the cause of world-class teaching, the promotion of high-quality vocational pathways is, I think, the single most transformational task in education today, but also because we'll have the opportunity to hear from some of the most experienced and influential thinkers and doers in vocational learning from several countries. Matthew Crawford recently wrote a book called The Case for Working with Your Hands, and in it he suggested that for much of the 20th century, management science transformed manufacturing, uh, the world of work more or less neatly divided into managers who use data and analysis to make decisions and the workers whose job it was to implement those decisions. Now, Matthew Crawford is an American philosopher who gave up his job running a think tank to set up his own motorcycle repair business. And he said that he was more intellectually challenged in running, uh, in running that business, in repairing motorcycles, than he was when he was running the think tank. So. The days when jobs can neatly divide into the thinkers and the doers, if ever they existed, are long gone. Now the global economy doesn't just value knowing and thinking, it values what people can do. So vocational education needs to have a clear sense of purpose to help develop practitioners who can think and thinkers who can act, not just technicians, but technologists. And in Pearson, we are the guardians of the BTEC qualification. It's a responsibility that we take very seriously because of the credibility that BTEC has uh, with employers and, and, and universities as a qualification that effectively bridges that divide between thinking and doing. You might say that it helps people to learn to think through doing. And we're nurturing and enhancing the reputation of BTEC in its next generation in a number of ways. First, by even closer involvement of employers, especially to determine the ways in which real work experience can be integral to the BTEC experience. Secondly, through greater rigor uh, in some aspects of the assessment. And thirdly, through the development of a vocational excellence framework that defines high quality delivery and teaching as much as it does the standard of the learning outcomes. And it's important that we do this because as the success of BTEC grows, so the weight placed upon it does too. For example, nearly a quarter of people that go to university now do so with a BTEC. And the BTEC Higher National Diploma, which is the equivalent of a foundation degree in terms of level, extends that bridge more deeply into the heart of a technical higher education. And while A-level continues to flatline as a route to university, so BTEC continues to grow. And that's because universities understand, just as employers do, that a tough qualification like BTEC is only achieved by demonstrating an ability to apply knowledge in the real world, not just an ability to write about it. Uh, and as the CBI Pearson survey of skills made clear, uh, the sort of skills developed through courses which engage industry insights and, and real workplace experiences are those that, that are in the shortest supply. The importance of vocational routes is well understood in many countries. In Singapore, for example, they've got a system of bridges and ladders so that people can go down vocational pathways and later cross to academic or, or vice versa so that people are not forced too early down one narrow route but have a chance to change as their desires and ambitions in life become clearer. They understand that people learn things in different ways at different points in their lives. And in Singapore, most people opt for that vocational route because they can see that it leaves their options open. They can go to university or they can, they can get a job. And the advantage of these flexible pathways is to make the system more responsive to a fast-changing macroeconomic needs. And remember that the academic achievements of 16-year-olds uh, in Singapore are very high indeed. So this is not a route for the less able. 
I hope that such a, a thirst and a demand uh, for vocational education becomes better understood in this country too. And I suspect that the people in this room today might play a significant part in determining whether that will happen. And I look forward to discussing how in the next two days. Thank you.